Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. What an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What an honor it is to be able to come into your homes once again uh, to rightly divide the word of truth uh, for us to amen, dive into the word of God. I certainly hope everybody's doing well today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on in. Amen. Boy, the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Shall I be afraid? No, I won't. Be afraid. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who then shall I be afraid? Oh, I won't be afraid. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome in. Welcome into our Indian Bible study, a little old school workshop song. I think I uh, want to be. Elder Tyson, somebody taught us that a long time ago. But nevertheless, welcome in. We say praise the Lord, everybody. Again, I hope everybody's in good spirits. I hope God is smiling upon you, favoring you, wherever you might be, even right now. We thank God for his grace, his mercy, his generosity, his loving kindness toward the children of men. And we're so glad and excited uh, to have you with us to be part of uh, this Bible study this evening as we continue studying the word of God, continue studying Amen. Uh, the great exploits of the Holy Ghost. And I certainly hope and pray that you're buckled in. Amen. Uh, uh, that you're in tune. Uh, and certainly hope that uh, you're availing your spirit. Amen. To receive what God has to say. Amen. To the church, even for such a time as this. And so, again, we greet you all in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so much to pray for in our world, so much to pray for in our local communities. Uh, I don't want to bombard you with all the things that are going on. Uh, to some, it may bring about a degree of, of distress when we consider the affairs, amen, of, of the world and the condition of the world, the uh, conditions of our political climate, uh, everything going on with the vaccine and all the things that we're up against and facing as a country, let alone as a world and as a body of believers. But in the midst of it, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? We have no reason to fear. The Lord is with us. Uh, the Lord, amen, desires to do great exploits. You can come and say praise the Lord. Yeah. Come and say praise the Lord. We're going to have a selection of amen from, amen, Brother Christopher and Nikki. Amen. This is the birthday boy, so amen. God bless you. <laughs> amen. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Amen. It is uh, bath time and bedtime here at the Shorter Home. And so certainly, amen, I appreciate you all's patience with us. But we thank God again. When the mystery everything that's going on, we have no reason to fear, no reason to be afraid. Amen. No reason uh, to walk around with our head down. God has got us. God has got me and you. He's taking care of it. He has the whole world in his hand. And I used to remember us singing that song. Um, you know the song he's got the whole world in his hand and we were growing up and I know to some it was a cheesy song that we would sing but it is a song of great revelation even right now and all that we got going on he literally has me and you in his hands we have no reason to worry no reason to be cast down a reason amen to amen be dismayed uh, God is in control amen and we praise him even the more we celebrate him even the more amen and we thank God for his loving kindness and his generosity amen toward the children of men and so again uh, there is so much to pray for you know someone who's standing in need of prayer uh, you know someone who 
amen uh, even needs this word of encouragement tonight so go ahead and hit that share button again we welcome you in I want to make a couple quick announcements and then we're going to go ahead and pray and get started uh, one of them is that our food bank is going to be open uh, special operations on this upcoming amen this upcoming Thursday at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, if you or anyone you know is in need, have them stop by, amen, and receive some of the good things that we have over at our Bethesda Food Bank. Um, we thank God for that ministry, that operation, the vision, amen, to continue empowering and encouraging our neighborhood through distribution of food, amen. Food scarcity is still a concern. Don't let don't let it get uh, no, <laughs> don't let this climate. Uh, let you get it twisted. People still have tangible needs even in the midst of the pandemic. And so in the midst of the pandemic, if there's one thing that uh, we certainly are sensitive to is that, amen, we certainly have individuals who, amen, don't need a hand out, need a hand up. And so I thank God that we have that food bank ministry. Um, food pantry ministry um, at our disposal here at Bethesda that we can continue to be a blessing uh, to those amen who are in need and so I certainly uh, encourage you uh, spread the word let somebody know uh, more importantly amen if you have a need yourself uh, don't let your pride get in the way amen uh, certainly come by amen and enjoy the things that we have to offer so that's this upcoming Thursday tomorrow amen one o'clock p.m. if you're catching re catching the, the re-airing of this broadcast anywhere uh, please know that our church uh, does have a uh, few distribution amen um, um, uh, at a pantry uh, located at our uh, 40 uh, 915 facility and uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity to service you and to service all those uh, at large amen who certainly amen could uh, be a blessed uh, be blessed by those services so again that is tomorrow one o'clock p.m. amen so again so much to pray for amen if you can't think of anybody to pray for pray for me uh, pray for Christopher Amen. pray for <laughs> amen our our seasoned saints pray for our young people pray for our nation pray for our president uh, the more and more you start thinking about uh, the people who need help and the people who amen uh, just need support need prayer amen you will avail yourself uh, to do such and uh, I pray that you'll join us because everybody needs prayer there's not a person amen watching this broadcast tonight or will experience this broadcast does not need prayer so amen uh, certainly if you can't think of anybody else to pray for pray for me I so they can use it let us pray Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your compassion, your loving kindness, your grace. We thank you for your favor. We thank you because you do all things well, oh God. We know that you have the whole world in your hand and we have no reason to fear, no reason to be afraid, no reason to be dismayed. We know that you're watching us, you're looking over us, you're looking over our families. And for this we praise you, for this we magnify you, for this we give you great glory, great honor. Tonight, oh God, we ask that you would come in our midst, that you open our understanding, open our hearts, open our spirits to receive what you are saying to the church. It's my prayer, oh God, that this word would go through the airways, oh God, penetrate the heart, oh God, and help us be what you're looking for for such a time as is the evidence that you've called for and uh, we praise you and we give you all glory all honor in Jesus name amen and amen we begin each Bible class with two passages of scripture you should know them by heart by now but if not amen join me in the book of John chapter number 8 verses 30 through 32 as well as 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Our quest is to continue to be faithful. Our quest is to continue to be disciples of the word of God. Amen. And that happens uh, by us. Uh, amen. Continuing God's word and studying God's word. Amen. So John 8 verses 30 to 32 reads as follow. And as he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let's run over to 2 Timothy uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. It reads as follows, study to show thyself approved unto God, a word of thee of not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. May God a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Again, our goal is to continue in the mode of discipleship. Amen. In order for us to be, I think, full ambassadors of the gospel, uh, as we understand, according to the book of Matthew, chapter number 28 and verse number 19, uh, the scripture tells us uh, to go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We know 
Amen. That that is the name of Jesus Christ. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And Lord, I'm with you always, even in the world. We know that the last admonishment that Jesus gave his disciples were to go out and to make more disciples. And certainly, how can we uh, continue as disciples? How are we to know that the individuals that we have been called for such a time as this to impress this gospel upon have it the right way if we don't continue uh, studying God's word? Again, if our goal is to go out and make disciples, how will we know that we are authentic disciples? We know that because we continue in the word of God. And so anyone that is leading you, giving you, hear me loud and clear, anybody that is giving you any spiritual insight, giving you any spiritual counsel, anybody that you're gleaming from, anybody that you're infatuated with, amen, that amen is not accountable through study of God's word, uh, I, you know, brace yourself. Anyone, amen, that's given you something that's not coming from God's word, amen, uh, certainly, uh, I tell you this, amen, I only want to receive and be disciple from someone who is following God's word. Um, it takes a disciple to know a disciple, right? So uh, as we continue, how do we know, amen, that we are, amen, disciples? How do we know that we are, amen, uh, following God's word? We, follow, we know we are by continuing to rightly divide God's word and by studying it. And so my encouragement again to everyone, amen, is let's not eat from everybody's table, amen. My goal is as a, a minister of the gospel, amen, is to encourage you to keep rightly dividing the word of truth, amen. If you continue you in my word that are you my disciples indeed how are we going to go out and encourage people to be disciples of jesus christ with no appetite for god's word with no longing for god's word with no hunger for god's word uh who are we going out to compel we're going to compel you to come follow us but we don't eat we're going to tell you to come uh, uh tell you to come follow us be part of the ministry and we don't rightly divide the word of truth and so certainly um, I believe that if there are admonishments we have as believers to continue to grow is to continue to keep eating, to keep studying, amen, to keep navigating God's word, amen, for every text message we send, amen, for every post we read, we should be reading one scripture. That's how easy it is, I think, for us sometimes to lose focus in God's word. Because trust me, if you get on Instagram on your phone, you can go scroll and scroll. Next thing you look up, it's 10 minutes and you've been looking at post after post. But just say to yourself, if I would use that same focus or energy uh, in scrolling up and down God's word, I would have accomplished a reading of a chapter or I would have accomplished reading of a few verses that could bring something of edification to me. Open up my eyes and understanding of what God's purpose and plan is. So it is possible. It is possible for us to grow the appetite. In. And how do we know? What is the identity of those who are followers of Jesus Christ? Those who have an appetite for the word of God. Those who don't sleep on prayer. Amen. Those who avail themselves. Amen. Amen. To amen. Studying God's word. Studying the scriptures. Uh, seeking God for insight. That's our charge. We go out and make disciples. We can't do it with erroneous doctrine. We can't go out and compel anybody if we don't know the word of God ourselves. All right. And so this leads us again to uh, the course that we're, we've been on the last few weeks. Uh, we have been uh, taking a look uh, strategically at the working of the Holy Ghost and the requirement that we have as believers to be evidence of the gift of the Holy Ghost. This, this Bible studies has blessed a number of people who have just sent me messages and said this Bible class has been really rich. So I just tune out and ignore those who have moved on and feel like you don't always be just on the same subject. Because I know how it is when we're when, as believers. Trust me, when I was on the other side in the pews, you know, it's like, oh man, he's teaching that again, he's teaching that again. The Word of God is so rich that it cannot be exhausted I believe in one particular setting and uh, and, and and I think those who amen are the you get those kind of people in life who don't like leftovers um, trust me I ain't get as big as I got amen in life without enjoying some leftovers and um, it ain't nothing like a good amen pot of chili amen that could take you through the week and ain't nothing like a good pot of spaghetti uh, that could take you through the, uh, the whole week now you get some people who want something new every week and they get disgruntled and dissatisfied, amen, they go out seeking things, but I just believe that, amen, if you've got something, amen, that, that you've taken time to to perfect and, and to, amen, put your foot in, amen, we can keep eating from this because you can never fully exhaust all the things. Each time you study a course of a text, you get new revelation, you get a, a new flavor palette, <laughs> you get opening, you know, each each time you explore God's word, there's a new experience, and so, um, so I've learned to tune 
tune out people who get disinterested for some people you know the bible class isn't deep enough and and um and then i wonder for those who amen truly want things that are deep why our lives don't match up for the things that are deep um and some some saints just want to be spooky and just want to be impressed with amen things that aren't practical but we live in such a time where i know what my charge is my call is to make sure that we get it um because our ministry is headed somewhere and um the accountability amen that we have to understand the power that we have on the inside of us to make us effective disciples and examples of god's word is what our charge is because our ministry is growing amen the needs of our community are changing the need for us to be as amen gentle as doves and wise as serpents uh as it relates to our ability to connect with people is so so imperative for such a time as this and i refuse to come off the wall because we're doing a great work here and um if and, and part of the challenge i believe um in our ministry nowadays is that everybody's got the Holy Ghost, but nobody's got the Holy Ghost. And you, if you get it, you get it. You know what I mean? Um, everybody's got the Holy Ghost, but we lack in obedience. Everybody's got the Holy Ghost. Um, we lack in accountability. Uh, everybody's got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Everybody's saved. Um, but amen. Uh, to be in alignment and to be in concert with God's movement. Amen. That's uh, that's that's beyond me. You know, everybody's got the Holy Ghost, but everybody's so grown. Everybody's so amen in their own realm. <laughs> um, and 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 so it makes me wonder, do we really have it like we say we got it? And what should be the outcome or what should be the evidence of an individual says they have the Holy Ghost? Um, because it's interesting how we can be so filled and we can be so short with people. We can be so filled and we can be so unloving. We can be so filled and yet so compromising. We can be so filled and yet so faithless and unfaithful to the things of God. And so um, sometimes we, we have to go back and we have to, amen, really exhaustively study what it is that we possess um, because we have an accountability uh, to be witnesses unto God. Amen. And uh, as we go out and encourage other people, you know, we can do all these wonderful things in his name and show up the day of and not be a faithful servant. <laughs> oh, I'm already teaching. I'm already in tonight's Bible class. I'm already into Bible uh, Bible class. Mine is already, I guess, go in there and exhaust that portion of the, of the, of the text. Um, we were dealing with the concept of the evidence, what it takes to be a great witness, right? Be a great witness, right? Um, and so we we study that from the vein of a lot of TV shows, uh, you know. Uh, he used to love New York undercover back in the day. Uh, my wife loved Chicago Fire PD, the whole Chicago series, uh, uh, Blue Blood, you name it. All of these different shows. I mean, there's a whole lot of information that's placed in uh, evidence and, and, and cracking the code and understanding what makes the dynamics of um, an effective witness. And uh, we've been studying that from the concept of how we prove ourselves unto God. That's the first thing that we hear, amen, from the Lord, amen, as we get the instruction for us to wait on the Holy Ghost. He tells us in the book of Acts, and this is the this is the text that laid the foundation, the book of Acts, he tells them to wait in Jerusalem, for they shall going to be filled with power. John baptized you in water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And then he speaks unto them and tells them, Amen, that you're going to be when the, after the after the Holy Ghost, after you receive this power, after the Holy Ghost has fully come upon you, it's come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me. Unto me. Um and that's the thing that blogs us all back. Uh, I think takes us down, blogs us down as believers, is because we love to impress people with our knowledge, our skill set, and the things that have been added unto us. We love to wear our, our Bethesda shirts. We love to, amen, pump up who we are and what we do and who we're affiliated with um, in the eyes of people. And this was certainly the testimony of that man who uh, went before the Lord, I baptized in your name, and I you know, cast out devils in your name, and I did all these wonderful things in your name, amen. And he said, depart from me, you work with iniquity, I never knew you. But you say you've got all of the fruits and all of the evidence to show uh, that I'm connecting with people and I'm sharing the page and, and I'm reaching out to people. And, and, and so uh, in the eyes of people, you look good, but in the eyes of who it matters to most, you're unknown. And that's the crazy part. And that's why I say you can have the Holy Ghost <laughs> and not have the Holy Ghost. 
because if God's on the inside of you, there's a character, there's a light, there's an exampleship, there's a call, there's an expectation that we do have. There's even an accountability that we have and a grace that we have toward one another for us to be the best we can be to represent God. But we have to stop kidding ourselves. We have to start fooling ourselves. It's too late in the evening. You see, the sun is going down, literally, right? <laughs> it's too late in the evening for us to be trying to, amen, uh, uh, try to pull one over on God. He's on the inside of us. If the Holy Ghost literally is God on the inside of us, dwells on the inside of us, how do we think we're going to play him cheap? How do we think we're going to uh, play him, amen, because we can do the exploits and we can, we can impress church people and we can do a bunch of churchy stuff, amen, but never come into full alignment with what it means to be in relationship with him. This is why I think this part of the scripture is so important because uh, uh, of the scripture is so important because we get this power. Amen. If the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you're going to be witnesses in these places. But the witness is going to be unto me. My God, we get so infatuated with the, and impressed with the power and the exploits. And we'll we'll throw money at the altar of people who can give you a great show and can demonstrate the great fruits of the Holy Spirit. But on the other end of it, there's a judgment day that's coming. There's an accountability that's coming when God is going to literally, amen, <laughs> reveal himself unto himself. <laughs> oh, the Old Testament tells us when no man can look upon God and live. I certainly believe that if that day comes and we're supposed to see him face to face, and as the apostle, amen, Paul would tell us, we shall ever be like him, amen. This mortal shall put on uh, uh, immortality, incorruptible, shall put on in, or, uh, corruptible, put on incorruptible, uh, and we shall behold him as he is face to face. If we take that scripture literally, then literally when we come before Christ and there's the unveiling, the, the, the unveiling of the bride, the, you know, there's the veil is in front of the bride. Well, back, back in the day, they used to have a veil and then, amen. And you would take the veil off and it would be like, ooh, or ah, you know, depending on, you know, <laughs> if the bride was, amen, y'all know what I'm trying to say. But can you imagine, look upon that judgment day when the veil is taken off of the bride, there should be nothing except a reflection of Christ seeing himself in each and every one of us. And so the depart from me worker of iniquity. I really believe speaks to an individual who lies to themselves and believes in, and literally deceives themselves. Um, and we certainly don't want to be deceived. You can't do your thing and make it in. That's the line is right there. Don't you be deceived. <laughs> you can't listen to the enemy and listen to the devil. Amen. One of the, the, the last two items I want to deal with as it relates to a man, am I evidence or, or, you know, they deal with the concept of I am evidence. Um, we, when we take that word, be ye witnesses, and we take that word, we, uh, word witnesses, and we translate it in the Greek, uh, you know, that translates to evidence. And so when he says, ye shall be my witnesses or evidence, the question we must ask ourselves with this gift of the Holy Ghost is, am I evidence? Am I evidence, amen, of, amen, the Holy Ghost and its workings on the inside of me? And so these past few weeks, we've been dealing with what makes a great witness, what makes great evidence, amen. And we've been dealing again with the concept of the shows. You need confidence, you need rigor, amen. You need consistency, attention to detail matters. We dealt with the, tr uh, the trustworthy elements we dealt with experience and how experience amen is so necessary in our witness unto God all to the Word of God we let we dealt last week with effective communication which I really felt like was a Bible class a lot of people probably slept on but it was really important Bible class um, as it relates to us making the connection with people are we evidence of relationship amen once we leave the upper room experience connecting with people and compelling them and drawing them unto the God that we serve and the charge that we have as believers to do exactly what we are instructed to do amen in the book of Matthew 28 which is to go out go y'all into the world and and minister and to teach right um, it requires us to have a effective communication which means it's order for us to fully be the body of Christ amen we've got to exude the body language we've got to exude amen the confidence and the effective communication necessary for us Amen. To go out and to compel people and to make the connection, and uh, and that 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 language that we get that identifies the power 
as the Spirit of God gives utterance, now must come on the inside of us. And now the work on the inside of us must open up doors for us to effectively communicate with people that they would come into alignment with their purpose and receive, amen, what God has for them, right? And so I uh, want to continue in that vein tonight, amen, by taking a look at two other concepts that are necessary for us to be great witnesses. And they deal. the first one deals with the concept of dedication or faithfulness, all right? Everybody say it takes faithfulness. It takes faithfulness, dedication or faithfulness. Um, one of the most important functions that any expert witness can have in preparation is a detailed written report of their opinion of the, or summary of the facts. And so the effective witness, uh, the expert report, amen, the charge that they have is to compile all the records to review and to render an opinion and to outline a concise summary and findings and recommendations. And, and most importantly, uh, one of the techniques that attorneys will use is to try to diminish the opinion of the expert report, uh, or, uh, of the expert reporter, right? And so the expert reporter um, has a responsibility to maintain a degree of faithfulness and dedication throughout the process. Um, and I, I, it, it's 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 a bit it's a bit different than I want to say consistency. Um, faithful and dedication, amen. Faithfulness and dedication deal with the concept of amen being amen amen uh, uh, um, uh, uh, faithful to amen the skill set or expertise or amen being dedicated to the cause for which um, they are required to give their uh, 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 expertise on the stand per se. All right, and so. Faithfulness and dedication, amen, and consistency are necessary in order for, amen, there to be a thriving, amen, of a case that is made uh, toward the defense or toward the prosecution, right? So, amen. Uh, uh, so good expert reports, they cite relevant authorities, amen, and most importantly, amen, their cause of dedication and faithfulness to their subject matter, amen, leads a degree of credence to the things that they're saying. All right. What are you saying? All right. Again, it's not the consistency of the testimony. This, that's another portion of what's saying being said. Faithfulness and dedication to the area of expertise is what this is about. This is someone who is their dedication and labor. Let's say, for example, this person that's called to the stand is someone who is a man, an expert in forensics. This is a dedication and faithfulness to that particular cause. A dedication and faithfulness, amen, to that expertise that allows them to open up themselves to do other research, to go beyond, amen, just their day-to-day -day activities, heighten them in the eyes of people who are doing the prosecution and doing the defense, and as a result of it, lead more credence to that witness expertise. Somebody who just gets up and says, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use a funny example, right? <laughs> uh, uh, someone who just, I mean, if we're using a, a man, uh, uh, this is just a, a funny example, right? Where, you know, sometimes a man, you can we'll use the show Chopped, for example. How many, you know, just by show of hand, watch the show, the reality TV show Chopped. All right. I like watching Chopped every now and then because Chopped gives you some ideas on what people can do with some of the crazy ingredients. All right. And try to whip something up within 15, 20, 30 minutes, what have you. All right. So the individuals who sit, amen, as judges on these individuals, they aren't just your regular taste testers. They're not me and you who just casually go to restaurants. These are people who went to school, who went to culinary school. These are people who are restaurant owners. These are people who are at the upper echelons of their profession to be able to sit down and to evaluate all areas of cuisine. These are people who can eat the stuff that you get from Southern barbecue restaurants or stuff that you can get from a man, the Thai the Thai restaurant also can 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 take a pilot or a pilot from your carnival amen food experience and they take all of these background experiences right <laughs> and and whatever the ingredients are placed out there for the chefs to make up they're counted on because of their faithfulness and dedication to their experience in that profession to be able to give an evaluation 
of what they believe is a fair assessment of what is being presented. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about faithfulness and dedication from the perspective of I've studied in this, I've labored in this. That means I've 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 done more than become just a Sunday school goer. I've done more than just hold an auxiliary. I've done more than just say I went to the church for 30 years. I actually stepped my cause up. I actually went and did research. I actually amen went beyond developed understanding. So if there's one thing, amen, that allows sometimes, amen. Amen. Experts or witnesses to amen have that extra appeal to award a case. It's dealing with the concept of dedication and faithfulness to a subject matter. Someone who comes to the stand with 30 degree or 30 years of experience and several degrees or credentials has a greater standing versus someone who amen literally just finished graduating from school and they really have no time. So. But that dedication and faithfulness says, I've made this my work. I've made this my life's mission. Are you evidence of dedication and faithfulness that you're making your walk with God, your desire to be a light, your desire to be an example, your desire, hallelujah, to be a clean vessel? Are you someone when called upon in the stand of life, you could stand and say, I'm dedicated and I'm faithful. That's what the gift of the Holy Ghost allows us to do. It allows us to be, amen, preserved, but it gives us a zeal and a desire and a passion to be accountable and faithful and dedicated to the cause. We live in a day and time when I question, amen, who has the Holy Ghost because so many people are starting to stop it. One minute you're on fire for God and the next minute somebody says something you don't like, you're out the game. The one minute you're rightly divided word of truth. I want to go to Enon. I want to. I want to study. I want to do all those kind of things. And the next minute is uh, I'm cool. One moment you have a burden, a passion, and a thirst for God. Then the next minute, you know what? I'm enjoying this season. One moment, Amen. You you know we we come up out the water. We come up out the tearing room, Amen. We come out of that new birth experience on fire for God. And I'm telling you, they literally are beating us to the doors. And then some five years later, are we still dedicated and faithful? Is my desire to please God still bubbling on the inside of me? Is that your testimony? Am I evidence that after 30 years of trials and tribulations, after 25 years of highs and lows, after 25 years of amen, getting amen, knocked down, but I'm getting back up, I still have a thirst and a passion and a drive to want to keep seeking and serving God. That's what we're talking about. That's what makes us a great witness. Your great witness is in the midst of all of your testifying and your sharing of God's word to somebody else. Amen. To look at your life and say, you know what? I've been up. I've been down. I've been on the edge. I felt like walking away, but I stuck with it. I was still committed to it. I still was fascinated. I still had a drive to want to learn something else about God. And what you will learn about some of these expert witnesses who are dedicated and faithful to a subject matter, their soul, amen, their desire uh, to, to, to exhaust everything thing in a subject matter will lead them to a chopped. Yeah, go with me for a second. You know, my fascination for food, for those people who are, on, are judges in that reality TV show, their fascination for food, their uh, 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 appetite, their understanding and wanting to be impressed with something else, it drives them to want to sit on a TV show where you don't know what's coming at you to want to consume. Are you that faithful and dedicated, believer, to, amen, uh, uh, your charge and to your hunger and appetite for the things of God that literally, Lord, sit me down and whatever you put on my plate, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing how these things work. I'm interested in wondering and, and, and knowing how your will works for my life. Uh, show me more, reveal more, right? Because the truth be told is someone who is dedicated and someone who is faithful to that cause they have a passion and a desire to want to keep learning, to keep studying, to keep growing, to keep being wild. Amen. And they'll be, you'll, you'll find some people who become experts in their fields. Sometimes they fail 70 sometimes <laughs> uh, before they before they they get their niche. And sometimes that's what it's like in this walk with Christ. Sometimes we hit our heads. Sometimes we have obstacles. Sometimes we face overwhelming circumstances. But it's something about God, amen, that requires my dedication, my faithfulness to get up, to get back in the race, to keep pursuing. Are you evidence of dedication and faithfulness? to the subject matter, to the awesomeness of God, to the wonder of his glory. Are you still impressed with God? 
that you get up every day saying, what is something new I can learn? What are you going to put on the, on, on the table for me to consume today? As crazy as it may sound, because I tell you, I see some of the craziest stuff when I watch chop that gets chopped up and put in and put in front of somebody. But I say to myself, wow, what if we as believers got to that place where literally every I get up saying, Lord, show me something new. Lord, blow my mind again. Lord, stretch me again. Lord, even in my own devotion of you, let me become a man, someone who is a man uh, that goes beyond a man, just the teachings in the Bible study to get to know more and more of you and have an appetite of your will and your desire are you evidence of that do you have that hunger is that passion on the inside is that fire on the inside of you to want to say i'm evidence i'm evidence of of someone who's called to be dedicated and faithful to the cause because when you go amen to take the stand amen sometimes we're relying on your subject matter expertise and your faithfulness and commitment to the course of study amen to be able to better understand all the circumstances concerning this case and sometimes people are trying to figure out life and you are just the expert that shows up in their life to put all the pieces together. But what happens if you quit too soon? What happens if the day they show up, they see you enjoying wine country? Or what if they show up and they see you taking a break? What if they see you show up and you got a black and mild in your hand? And what if they see you and that's the Sunday or that's or that's the experience they see you with where you just all of a sudden you forget all about the Holy Ghost and hey man, and you say, I'm just human. I'm just, hey man, you know, everybody has a day and you know, I'm just keeping it real. And, and so we have to be very careful of that because you never know when that degree of dedication and faithfulness will be required of us and be and be leaned on. How do you think many of us are making it right now. Some of us are making it because we see the Mother Browns. We see, amen, the, uh, 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 the, the other, amen, mothers in our ministry yet holding on, yet pressing, uh, yet keeping on. Yet I grew up watching Mother Ida Robinson. I, I grew up, amen, watching Deacon Carl Jackson. I watched all these, amen, pillars of the faith. I, I watched Deacon Bowden, amen, uh, uh, back in the day. Even when life's challenges, amen, amen, uh, 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 took sometimes their health, they still had this passion, this drive, and dedication and faithfulness to the cause of Christ. That said, wow, there's some weight to what they're saying. There's some weight, there's some credence. And their exampleship says, you know what, if they can make it, I can make it. And who is in your circle that's looking at you to say, you know what, man, if, if, if all I know that's going on in their life and they still holding on, they're still being faithful, they're still giving God their all, their time and their energy, who is that person for you? Who are you becoming? Are we becoming the very things that, amen, were there for us? Are we becoming those agents of stability? Are we becoming those saints of Zion that we admired and we grew up watching back? I'm sorry, I went on a tangent, but faithfulness and dedication is the cause. Let's go to the book of Matthew, amen, 25. Because again, this is all important as it relates to, amen, our quest and desire for us to be faithful, all right? Um, let's go to Matthew, and we pick up the story in Matthew 25, verse number 14, and we'll skip around because there's some things I, wanna, I want to, amen, draw in particular. But Matthew 25, verse number 14, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man, is as a man traveling into a far country who owned, uh, who called his own servants and delivered unto them goods, un unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability. Uh, and straightway took his journey. Um, then he had received five talents. Uh, then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same uh, and made them five other talents. Likewise, he that had two uh, also gained two others. Uh, but he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of, his, of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. Uh, as and so he that had received the five talents came and brought the other five. I know the story. Um, um, and uh, he, uh, the Lord says unto them, you have five talents. You gave me five more. He says unto him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Are you evidence that you can take what God gives you and flip it? Ah. He says, I will make thee rule over, over many things. He says, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You know the story of the, of the other one where they had the two talents, right? 
uh, one had two talents, amen. Uh, uh, he that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I gained two other talents besides them. He said unto him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Just simple, amen, taking what God has given you, being resourceful, and taking the things that God has given you and applying those things, amen, to bring back greater glory unto God. Those are the things. What, what I appreciate most about what the Lord says is you would have thought that he that was given five and he that was given two, he that was given one, the one that was given five versus the one that was given one, you would have thought, okay, from a variation perspective, um, that the one that was given five had more to work with. The scripture says you were faithful over a few. Five, in the eyes of this of this Lord, amen, is not relatively a, a large sum of, 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 <laughs> of, of, a, of a give out. They all had a few to work with, basically. And so sometimes we... We, we wrongfully look at other people's swim lanes and think somebody's got more than you. And the Lord, amen, of these servants had the same outlook on everything that was given away. He saw it all as a few. Can I get us to mature in the spirit, to stop looking into other people's lane and stop falsely assuming that somebody's got more than you? We all got a few. Somebody in the comment section should just put that there right now. We all working with the few. <laughs> don't let this fool you. Don't let this, you know, <laughs> you know, don't don't let people. Amen. Because somebody has got a nicer car. Somebody's got a nicer home or something like that. We're all working with the few. Don't nobody got more. Amen. He says to the same one that have five over two. You've been faithful over a few things. Enter thou into what? The joy of the Lord. Then you have this one who had one talent. This is verse number 24. He that had one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou was a hard man. I knew you had an expectation. Reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strong. This right here speaks to what this servant thought about his Lord. I tell you, sometimes many of us, we're, we're so intrepid on moving forward in God because our view of God is off. He had made a decision that he wasn't going to do anything um, even when he was handed something few and could have done something with it because his disposition of how he viewed his Lord was so skewed. He accuses him of being a hard man. He accuses him of being an individual uh, that, that, that sows where he does not reap or, or uh, 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 reaps where he does not sow. He pretty much insults, insults his Lord, <laughs> gathering where thou hast not strong. I mean, he, 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 he says, I was afraid his fear based upon what he had caused him to take what he had and hide what he had. He hid it in the earth. There thou hast that is thine. He made an assumption, amen, that that. The based upon his relationship or his view of his relationship, amen, with his Lord, amen, that because he was a hard man and, and because of that, amen, that it, it, that expectation in his relationship with his Lord caused him not to embrace the moment, but to be fearful. Can I share something with you? Amen. What made these servants faithful was the idea, amen, of uh, getting over the fear of the Lord. We always talk about what's the what's the difference between, amen, uh, what's the opposite of faith? It is fear, right? And so these individuals were faithful over those few things because they got over the fear. And so his fear immobilized him, put him back in a place, and the Lord said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, your lack of dedication and faithfulness. Can I tell you that sometimes individuals who are called upon to be experts, they're not dealing with a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of money that you're given in research. There's not a whole lot of money. Sometimes when you're given a cause, you just have a passion to want to do more of what you have. And when somebody invests anything in you, you have an obligation to want to give something back unto him. Can I tell you that this this text deals with worship. This text deals with how you handle the gifts of the Holy Ghost. This text deals with how you have a complex of God that can sometimes debilitate your ability, amen, to see that even if he gives you something, amen, that's, amen, what you consider small, he's still worthy of more. 
If we were to use this text in the concept of worship, would you undermine the very breath that God gives you? Oh, God, you just gave me this breath. And so I'm just giving, amen, this breath with you. You can take that breath and you can write a song of glory unto me. You could take that breath and you can <laughs> minister God's word. You could take that breath. I mean, if you just look at it from, amen, a small, amen, uh, 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 ideological perspective, just what you, you know, sometimes your, amen, fear causes you to keep things channeled in and hid in. And God counts that as slothfulness. He counts that as wickedness. His lack of immo uh, immobility, amen, created a, a perception complex, amen, that this steward was not aware of. For all of his thinking that his master was hard and that his master was an individual who reaped in places that he did not sow, for all this, all of his thinking about how hard his master was, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that was the same thing that he possessed. Can I tell some of you just, you know, sometimes what you think of other people is actually who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to get a whole lot of love tonight. Amen. Dealing with that concept. That's true for the matter is sometimes the, the things that you put on other people, that's really who you are. Oh, that person is so nasty. No, you really nasty. And that's kind of what we see here in this text. For this individual, a man, to take what he had and to hold it, a man, and, and, and hide it in the earth, the, the uh, lack of accountability to be faithful and to be dedicated caused this Lord to respond and say, no, you're the one who's wicked. You're the one who is slothful, uh, slothful. And since you have this understanding of who I am and because you made up in your mind this is who I am, then you would have known this would have been the outcome. Ah. The charge that we have as believers who are filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, is for us, amen, to be good and faithful servants over a few things. Are you evidence of taking care of what God gives you? He gave you a little family. Can you take care of that and give something back unto him? He gave you a little piece of money. Can you take that and bring some glory unto his name? He's given you half decent mind <laughs> right could you take that and allow ingenuity and creativity and wisdom to overwhelm you amen he's given you something it may not be a whole lot he counted it all as few he gave you what he had can you take that and make the most of it and in doing so this is your evidence amen that makes you a great effective witness it's your dedication and your faithfulness yeah because the truth of the matter is, is, is sometimes the expert that stands on the, that's on the stand, amen, has to tell you how many times I put in funding for research and it got denied. How many times I made requests and petitions for loans and they didn't see the level of investment. There was no help. All I got was this, this little startup money. But I went out and made the most of it and brought something back unto God. Are you evidence of that? Are you evidence that God can put something in you? That God can trust you with something and you can take that and despite the opposition and despite your own feelings, go out, amen, and, and make more. You see discipleship here. These faithful servants, right, literally have to take a few. And what does the scripture say that they do? They took their talents and the scripture says, uh, uh, if you back up, if you look at the methodology, amen, uh, the one that had the five, the scripture says, uh, he went out and... Uh, he went, uh, let's see, back up, uh, to want to get five, two, and one, according to their, amen, several ability, right? So the Lord knew what they could manage, right? He took the five talents and he went and traded with the same. He went out and took what he had and he opened his mouth and compelled someone, <laughs> amen, to bargain and, 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 and in bargaining and in going out and negotiating. And by going out and compelling someone, he went out and made more. This, is, this text deals with discipleship. It deals with worship. It deals with your God complex. It deals with entrepreneurship. It deals with your level of appreciation and gratefulness. This text right here deals with a lot. But I mean, to sum it all up, amen, God gives you what he gives you based upon your ability, amen, to have a capacity, amen. But more importantly, he's still a God who gives you something. Is he not worthy of you giving something more back to him that he's given you? My God. 
Let everything that have breath praise the Lord, right? <laughs> He's giving you breath, right? And that breath, amen, is for purpose. But every time you give, amen, glory back unto his name, not only do you accomplish, amen, the purpose for which you were given the breath, but you bring delight and glory unto them. You multiply. So I love to go to this text because this text challenges me in business. It, down, it challenges me in how I view other individuals. It causes me to ask myself what's hindering me from, from, from uh, pouring into the lives of others. Because this is literally what this individual had to do with the five and the two talents. They had to go out and train. They had to go out and open up themselves. They had to open up, amen, and really be, amen, what the scripture tells us to do. We have the Holy Ghost, but we're so closed off. We have the Holy Ghost, amen, and we don't go out and take advantage of, amen, the time in which we have, all right? We don't, don't take advantage, amen, of the gift of the inside of us to go out, amen, and to compel others, amen, and in doing so, bring more into the kingdom of God. He's blessed you with something. Are you evidence? of dedication and faithfulness to what he's given you. Dedication and faithfulness is not holding on to what you have. Sometimes faithfulness is letting go of what you have to get more. Ah, mm, yeah, see, we don't teach that level. We teach faithfulness from the conflict, the complex of hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, amen. This connotation of faithfulness is tied to someone who went out, amen, and used ingenuity and creativity and the abundance of the glory of God, amen, to take what they had, amen, and to let go in the effort of going back and collecting more. I hope that shifted somebody's context. I hope that opened up somebody's mindset because, again, you can view faithfulness and faithfulness can make you rigid. It can make you strict. And I'm in the way and I'm good old faithful and that good old faithful is marked as someone who does nothing. Faithfulness is not you not doing nothing. Faithfulness is you trusting God. OK, let's just open up the door. You've been faithful. Amen. And you call yourself faithful and we call somebody faithful because they haven't moved off the bench. We call somebody faithful because they haven't given up their post or their auxiliary. We call somebody faithful, but they haven't done anything to, to light a spark, to bring nothing into the table. And so we reward people for staying put. That's not what happens here in the text. Can we read the text, saints? This is good. I'm saying amen to myself tonight because this is good. Faithfulness was not measured by doing nothing. Faithfulness required ingenuity. It required drive. It required openness. It required us, amen, to be dedicated and faithful to the cause of pleasing our Lord that we go out and we actually let go. Uh, okay. <laughs> Praise be to God. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke 22. Luke 22, Luke 22, I hope that shifts someone's perspective on the concept of faithfulness, my God, <laughs> faithfulness, all right, and dedication, all right, we see this even with Jesus, all right, he says, and he came out and went and as he was wont, y'all forgive me, King James be cracking me up sometimes because I just, you know, I should just go with a simpler version, but I love, I love the King's English, all right? <laughs> to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Ooh, the Holy Ghost comes, amen. <laughs> oh, God, the Holy Ghost comes, amen, uh, to be that source that protects us even from temptation, all right? All right, as he was withdrawn from them, amen, about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed saying father if it be thy willing all right remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thy will uh or but thine be done um and uh and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him and him being in agony he prayed more earnestly uh as his sweat was i'm sorry and, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground I need you to see something. Christ's faithfulness to the cross was not staying put. It was not just surrendering in the Mount of Olives as the blood was, was falling to the ground. His faithfulness unto God was saying, Lord, not my will, but let me stretch myself. Let me take what you bless me with and help me. Let, let it be a, a mechanism to help me overcome the world. And the scripture says that when he learned to give it over to God, when he learned to yield to God, what happens to him? Verse number 43 says there's appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. He didn't do it in his own power. 
can I can I help some see what you have to learn about faithfulness is that when you step out of your area of comfort, you're relying on God's support. Jesus is in the flesh. He's 100% God, 100% man. But what we sometimes fail to do is realize that in this dispensation of Jesus here on earth, he's relying on strength from God. <laughs> because he's 100% man. And as long as we're 100% man, we need God's strength. He could have rested in his own loins. He could have said, hey, you know what? I'm God, and I'm not going to go a step further. But he learned a mechanism of faithfulness not to stay put or stay stationary, but to continue heading to Calvary's cross. And when he learned to let go, not just rest in his power, not just bury in his power and stay in this position, I'm just going to be God. No, when he learned to yield, what ends up happening? The scripture says, that the angel appeared from heaven and strengthened him. It multiplied when he took what he had and yielded it unto God. When you learn, believer, to stop being stationary and to stop just, amen, holding yourself restrictive, see what else God can add to you, what else God can add unto you. <laughs> uh, it is, it, Jesus in his own power being 100% God power to perform miracles water into wine for this portion of the journey he needed the strength of God can I tell some of you are you evidence that that you can be vulnerable are you evidence that you still rely on God and are you faithful enough to let go so that God can give you what you need to get to your next course of life your faithfulness is not just holding. Your faithfulness is letting go. Are you evidence? I hope that changes somebody's complex from this day forward. I hope you never view faithfulness and being faithful as uh, in the same manner again. I hope that your whole concept of faith is not restrictive that makes you fearful, but faith opens you up to let yourself out so that God can give you the strength that you need so that you can encourage somebody else. Because if I stay here resting in my own loins of, of who I am, then that means Chiron, some 2,000 years later, will never receive the salvation that he needs and that you'll never have the deliverance that you need. And most importantly, that the Holy Ghost cannot come alive and be on the inside of us as we enjoy and appreciate today by God great is his faithfulness great is his faithfulness great and we say that from his stability but great is his ability to let go even in my life that I would learn to know him in a better way Jesus what a revelation what a revelation what a revelation when you learn to let go when you learn to fully trust him that's the mechanism of faith because we love, I tell you, I've been in my whole, my whole, amen, existence in church. I've heard that term. Ooh, praise God, he's so faithful. Oh, he's so faithful. And we, and we just apply people for faithfulness, and they've never moved off the pew. They've just been there. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because consistency is important, and we forsake our sympathy with others. But they've never done anything, amen, for their faith to be tested or for them to grow. We just, we just celebrate the fact that they've been there this whole time. But what's been multiplied, what's been gained, what's been stretched. And every now and then as a faithful believer, you have to go through that experience with God where you have to let go of what's comfortable and ask God to stretch you. Faithfulness is I trusted and believed God at the end of the day. I'm back to give my testimony. <laughs> I'm back to say that he still saves. I'm back to say that he's a keeper. I'm back to say that when the when the blood was dripping from my face, falling to the ground, he allowed an, uh, he allowed an angel to come and strengthen me to get to Calvary's cross. Oh, help me tonight. Help me tonight. Let's go to John. This is good. I hope y'all I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. Praise be to God. Amen. John 18 and verse number 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of the sin. Let me back up, just give you some context, because this is dealing really with, amen, uh, 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 the work of Jesus Christ. Most importantly, amen, the comforter, amen. Um, let's back up. Uh, let's go. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse number five. John 16. Verse number five. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me whether whether it's uh, whether goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because thou believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of the world is judged. Amen. The faithfulness of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, amen, is the fact that God in his faithfulness doesn't stay, but he chooses to leave. <laughs> Uh, we were, we were the disciples were comforted with Jesus, Amen. There at his every at, at their ever beck and call, the disciples were comforted, Amen. With Jesus telling them, "Let not your heart be troubled," because he was standing near them. I mean, this is the Jesus who, when the seas of of Galilee got to rocking, Amen, told the peace, told the storm, uh, the peace be still, told the waters peace be still, right? Um, so th there's a comfort that's always there, but the true faithfulness of God is this and the fact that he leaves. He says, if I don't go away, I can't give you something greater. And I need you to understand this as it relates to the concept of faithfulness. As long as you have and as long as you hold and as long as you're rigid with what you have, you do not give God an opportunity to come in and be your sufficiency and to be your comforter and to be the God. As long as he's always near, as long as I'm with you disciples, you're not going to get the best thing ever to happen to this world and that's to give to the Holy Ghost. Are you evidence that you're willing to let go in some areas so that God can be the comforter that you need? So that God can expand you? Uh, because he is the greatest thing that is to come. This is what it requires of us in our effort to be dedicated and faithful witnesses. Is having the faith to believe that God will take care of things. That God will be there to comfort us. For God will be there to fill in the slack. That God will be there, amen, to fill in, amen, those areas, amen. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, and, um, and most importantly, he says when he comes, he will, reprove, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not me. And of righteousness because I go to the Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. And so my my challenge in uh, 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 of encouragement to you all is to even allow Amen the Lord to exercise His level of uh, uh, faith in you by allowing Him Amen to come into your life and to open you up to receive that impartation that you need. That's 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 the faith element. That's the faith Amen component in our relationship with God. Amen. That relies uh, that requires us to let go of our own intellect and to let God come in to let go of our own game plans and strategy and let God be strong and strengthened on the inside of us. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and. Verse. Number. Let's go. Let's Hebrews 10 and 10. By the which we were all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. His faithfulness to the Christ, or his faithfulness to the cross, all right? And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. I need you to understand this. There was a commitment and a faithfulness and a dedication, amen, in times past before the blood of Jesus Christ, all right? There was a faithfulness to the same old, same old. I'm telling y'all, this concept of faithfulness is blowing my mind, y'all. It's the same over and over again. Good old faithful, good old faithful, good old faithful. Right? We call our car that. Oh, got this good old faithful <laughs> vehicle, right? Um, you know, and, and consistency is important. That was another portion that we talked about earlier. All right? But there became a, a, a falling in love, amen, with systems and processes that God was designed to shatter. This is Jesus coming in the flesh. I came in to do to undo all of that. Every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. The faithful acts that we are just we're faithful to institutions, faithful to mechanisms, faithful to ways of thinking, faithful to a man robotics and faithful to the consistencies of religion and ritual that can never undo the damage of sin 
Jesus Christ's coming sacrifice once and for all. But this man, after he have sacrificed, I'm sorry, I'm in Hebrews 10 and verse number 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Now, we know God has no right hand because, you know, again, he's omnipresent, right? He's <laughs> right. But he sits down at the right hand of God from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstools. Uh, for by one offering have he perfected forever them that all are them that are sanctified. One one sacrifice sanctified us all forever. One move outside of tradition, one move out outside of ritualism, one move outside of the routine created a banner of righteousness for us all. This is the wonder work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One, amen, uh, one getting out of what was, I mean, <laughs> he's the high priest, amen, and him being the high priest, amen, he could have come down and just done stuff more royally like other priests could have done with the pageantry, amen, and could have fallen into the Levitical order, what have you, but coming in one time, being that perfect sacrifice for us, through his sacrifice, him making one offering have perfected forever, them that are sanctified. His one act on Calvary's cross made the way forever. Whereof, verse number 15, what I was getting to is whereof, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that, he had said before, this, the, uh, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of sin is, there is no more offering for sin. Look at what happens. The Holy Ghost, as a witness, amen, of this testimony of the sanctification of Jesus Christ comes in and makes covenant with us. And so God literally comes on the inside of us. He says, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, I will put my law in their hearts. The Holy Ghost coming on the inside of us becomes the law, becomes the fulfillment of the law. Christ on the inside of us. He says, I will put, amen, my laws in their hearts and in their minds while I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more because of his faithfulness and dedication. Again, the expert witness, amen, sometimes has to come and draw from his own resources and draw from his own strengths. And sometimes, amen, be faithful to a cause that does not seem fruitful. But it's that dedication and faithfulness that adds a degree of credibility to the amen, uh, uh, to the expert witness account of, I'm sorry, or uh, to the testimony of the expert witness. And so if we're ever going to be good witnesses, we must follow the example of Jesus Christ being faithful, amen, to the rendering of work that yields even more. What do you think one sacrifice did for Jesus as it relates from a talent perspective? One talent opened up the floodgates for millions, for billions, for as many as the Lord our God should call to have the opportunity to give their Christ, to give their soul to Christ. He didn't bury that talent. He took that talent and he bargained and he traded and exchanged it for the opportunity for us to be part of the bride of Christ, for us to become a man, part of the fellowship of Christ. This is what this is. This is the charge that we have. Are we faithful and dedicated? Am I evidence that I'm willing to amen, give up what's comfortable to see someone else blessed? Am I willing to give up amen, the very thing that makes me who I am so that other people can enjoy the freedom of salvation? That's what comes through dedication and faithfulness. That's the charge that we have. Praise be to God. Praise be God. I hope this is helping someone. I hope this is, amen. Again, not faithful, amen, in doing nothing, but faithful in overcoming the things that were redundant and the things that are mundane. Faithfulness is not standing, amen, put, <laughs> standing in place. Faithfulness is getting out of oneself <laughs> to allow God to stretch us and to have the faith to multiply our lives. I hope I'm making that point. I hope I made it several points tonight. I hope, tonight, I hope that that is something that is, amen, uh, being um, uh, uh, recycled in your spirit over and over again, amen, so that we no longer 
commit ourselves to the vain works of the priests, standing up daily over and over again, making sacrifices and saying, I'm sorry, over and over again, knowing that it's no longer going to take away sins, but that we would embrace Christ Jesus and embrace the gift of the Holy Ghost that has come to make us back or to put us back in fellowship with Christ Jesus, put us back in fellowship with God. <laughs> Through one offering, he perfected them forever that are sanctified. If you're sanctified or if you have any semblance of living a life of holiness unto God, it came from one display of faithfulness. Of, of one stepping out of themselves to be our propitiation of sin. And for this, we should praise him. For this, that one breath that you have should bring some glory back to his name. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. My last point, and I'm going to, amen, conclude this portion of the I am evidence, all right, is this, and that is the last thing that, amen, we know that an expert witness, or or I'm not going to say expert witness, but if there's one thing, amen, that makes us an effective witness, it has to be our ability to improvise. A good expert witness needs to be able to improvise. They need to be times, important times, in litigation and cross-examination where they're not necessarily prepared for an answer. All right. They're placed in a situation where they have to deal with hypothetical examples and they have to rely upon a man, their expertise, a man to be able to help them navigate that without the expert witness feeling uh, like they have to reply with. I don't know. Can, can I can I get you to put this in the comment section? Amen. Lord, deliver me from I don't know. Lord, deliver me from I don't know. If there is one thing, amen, that I'm learning and I've learned as a working professional, growing and maturating, amen, in the professional realm, if there's one thing that nobody wants to hear when it's critical time, it's I don't know. Lord, deliver me from I don't know. <laughs> Lord, deliver me from I don't know. If there's one thing that makes us effective witnesses, it has to be our ability to improvise. Amen. The word of God, amen, tells us in the book, amen. Uh, let's go to the book of Acts chapter number four. Just a couple things, and then I'm going to leave you, amen, in this particular course, all right? Lord, deliver me from I don't know. Amen. Uh, it's in the book of Acts chapter number four, amen, and uh, let me back up. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll just I'll summarize so I don't have to read it all. But verse number 32 is where I was going to take a thought from. And that was just and the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Neither of them had any or neither have said any amen of them uh, that ought the things which he possessed his uh, was his own. Um, but they had all things in common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Neither of them or, or neither was there any among them that lacked uh, for as many as were possessors of lands of houses sold them and brought the prices of things that were sold and laid in out the feet of the apostles and distribution was made unto every man according to his needs. I, I just want to back up for just a quick moment and just deal with the construction of the early church. Right. When you're dealing with the construction of the early church, amen, the Bible is telling us. Amen. That they assembled to pray. Amen. As they assembled to pray, places were shaken. As they assembled to do the work, there was great harmony and unity and edification that was brought upon the movement. And the scripture says that as they begin to assemble together, as they continue to get on one accord, as they continue to work in the vein and harmony, amen, of their assignment and purpose uh, in the establishment of the early church, the scripture says that they begin to be filled with the Holy Ghost. As God began to fill them with the Holy Ghost, um, the word of God began to come over them with great boldness. And the scripture says they were a multitude of them that believed. They had one heart. They were of one soul. Neither of them, amen, uh, a great, it's a great uh, uh, pleasure in their personal possessions. They put everything they had together, amen, and they became a collective unit. They had all things in common. And the scripture says it was because of this, this unity, it was because of this that God gave them great power, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and he gave great grace to them all. The thing that sometimes rattles us in our ability to be effective witnesses is our inability to improvise. 
It's our inability to allow God to do to take to, all right to literally, Amen. Uh, take up, Amen. The slack in the areas that we aren't uh, that we're not as gifted and we're not as knowledgeable as uh, uh, knowledgeable in. I'm sorry. We talked last week about how the scripture tells us in the book of Luke that we're going to be times when we have to go out with our personal script and just literally have a man, the zeal of God to go out. The Holy Ghost will come and make intercession for us. The Holy Ghost will come tell us what to say. We, we, we exhausted that last week when we talked about the concept of effective communication. And if you ever uh, need more insight on it, that's Luke 12 verses 11 through 12. We dealt with that concept of going out without personal script, the Holy Ghost, amen, coming, amen, to literally be an improviser, amen. Holy Ghost literally coming, amen, to guide us and tell us what to say, amen. But what I love most important most importantly about the development of the early church is that their belief with one heart and with one soul amen them all collectively putting their forces together the scripture says that God not only gave them great power but God gave them great grace and they never lacked anything and that great power and that great grace helped them overcome magistrates it helped them overcome political, politically corrupt systems. It helped them literally fuel the work of the first century church, amen, in times that were not idealistic. It helped them stay together. It helped the gospel get advanced from house to house. It helped them literally establish the works that we would go on to see in Asia Minor and in places like Africa. This zeal and this passion that they had was birthed because of the spirit of oneness. And it created a spirit uh, uh, of an ability for them to improvise, for them not to be caught up. Amen. Never did you really hear of the, of the first uh, century church being shaken by an accusa accusation. Every time they stood up, amen, before magistrates or stood up before political systems and in many cases stood literally to be a man head on the chopping block, for lack of a better word. Um, they literally were able to give it a defense and to give an account, amen, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. He guarded their minds. He guarded their tongue. He gave them ingenuity. A great witness has an ability not to be led astray. Not to be let off the path because you have people who are always trying to poke holes in what it is that we believe by pointing out contradictions, by pointing out, amen, the Gentile way versus the Jewish way of doing things versus, amen, the, amen, mosaic way of doing things. In the midst of all that they had, they placed all the energy and talent together and God gave them a great boldness to be able to defend themselves in every situation for which they, amen, found opposition. And I'm here to encourage you that in order for us to be evidence of the gift of the Holy Ghost, we have to have an ability to improvise. We have to have an ability, amen, not to allow, amen, an expert or uh, to, to allow, amen, the lawyers of life to trick us up. And most importantly, we should never be left with the testimony. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Every time, amen, they were challenged on why they believed what they believed. Every time uh, they were pulled upon to give declarative, uh, uh, declarative words, amen, on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave them power. He gave the, in verse 33 says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine having to tell the story of the resurrection over and over again? Having to tell them uh, repeated accounts over and over again of the things that they share with you. Amen. As you're crossing the Sea of Galilee or as you're, amen, hearing the stories of, uh, um, as you're, amen, feeding 5,000 or as he's uh, healing and the sick or what have you. And over and over again, having to give an attest, to give an account and to give a testimony and to say that this person lived and breathed and died and bled and, and rose and, resu and was resurrected and you're so convinced of it, amen, that everybody's trying to pick something apart of you to get you to come off of what you believe and you have to stand in the midst of it and rely solely on the gift of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost to help you speak to the community leader as well as speak to the house of Cornelius, let alone speak to the different individuals who have been assigned to your life to allow the advancement of the gospel to take place. There's an ability to improvise that's been granted to each and every one of us, amen, uh, to be able to make us effective witnesses. I leave you with this last point and we'll get out of here. And that is the book of Isaiah chapter number 11. Isaiah 11 
amen, verses 1 through 5. Again, I certainly hope, amen, that everybody is blessed by this. I hope, amen, you aren't bored, amen, but that you're getting something from this, amen. Isaiah 11 tells us this, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. We're talking about the prophetic utterance that Isaiah sees in the midst of all that's happening, in the midst of all the, of the turmoil that's taking place. Isaiah has a vision. He said, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, amen. Uh, a branch that shall come out of his roots. He's talking about Jesus and Jesus coming, amen, from the lineage, amen, of Jesse. You know, Jesse, the father of David, all right? So from the line of David, from the lineage of David comes, amen, this rod which shall come forth. And we know that that rod is Jesus. He is the branch, right? He says, I am the I am the vine, you are, amen, the branches, all right? He is literally, amen, uh, that shall grow out of his roots, all right? All right, and the spirit of the Lord, all right, look at the prophecy of the Holy Ghost shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. I'm telling you, God desires us to have an ability to improvise. And how are we able to navigate when people are throwing things at us, when life is coming crazy at us? Look at what ends up happening. This is what rests upon Jesus, and this is what rests upon each and every one of us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. He says, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord shall make him quick understanding, shall, uh, I'm sorry, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after uh, the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of the ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with iniquity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and the righteousness shall be girdled, shall be girdled of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Oh, my Lord, help me tonight. Amen. Isaiah 11, amen, verses 1 through 5. Your ability to improvise. If you study, if you study amen, the life of Jesus Christ, he was an improviser. He used the gift of the Holy Ghost to give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding. My prayer for you, amen, that you would continue to exhibit evidence and that you would to be able to have the testimony that I am evidence is that God would give you a renewal and a revival of the spirit of wisdom and understanding. That you would have the spirit of counsel and might. That you would have the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. These are all the residues and all the insights and all the luxuries that we get when we get the gift of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. And that we should be quick of understanding in the fear of the Lord. And that we would not judge situations with our own eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of the ears, but with righteousness shall we judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. All of these things are tied with us. If these are the things that are to, amen, come from the root of Jesse, if these are the things that are to embody, amen, the work of Jesus Christ, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, all of these things, spirit of knowledge, quick of understanding, amen, uh, in the fear of the Lord, an ability not to judge things based on what they see, this is what we possess as believers. When we get the gift of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, are we evidence that we operate with the spirit of wisdom and understanding? Are we evidence that we operate with the spirit of counsel and might? That we operate with the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord? And that most importantly, amen, it can be said of us, amen, that when, amen, amen, that, 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 that with our breath, amen, we're able to slay the wicked in the opposition. Just like we saw in the book of Acts. We saw the Holy Ghost enable them and strengthen them and give them a power and give them an authority and they give them an ability to rise up in the midst of all they were going through, amen, and to guard them and to give them that wisdom and ingenuity and creativity to be able to allow the gospel to flourish and to go forth and to build, all right, and to allow, amen, us to receive it even some 2,000 years later. I pray, amen, that the spirit of the Lord is fully resting upon us as it did on him and that we operate with that spirit, that we operate with that spirit of wisdom and understanding. Amen. That, amen. Are you evidence? Are you evidence that you are not judging things based upon what you see, 
but that you're judging as God gives you influence and as God gives you insight and as God reveals. There's a discernment that comes with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Am I evidence? Am I evidence? Are you evidence? Do you have an ability in situations that are sticky and in, in environments, amen, that don't seem advantageous, amen? Are you, do you have the ability to improvise and not get stuck with, I don't know. The Holy Ghost gives us that discernment. The Holy Ghost gives us that insight. It gives us that wisdom. It gives us that foresight. It gives us that knowledge. It gives us, amen, access to be able to open our spirit, amen, to even ask of God who grants us wisdom freely. If he did it for the first century, for the first century church, if he did it and it allowed them to grow in power and knowledge, why can't it do it for us here in the 21st century? If that same power was able to strengthen them to overcome, amen, the, the world systems at the time and overcome opposition and overcome the Roman Empire, amen, should it not give us victory on our jobs? Should it not give us victory in our situation? Should it not give us victory to overcome somebody? Amen. Killing your character. Should it not give you victory? Amen. To overcome and to rise above. Amen. The nonsense and the foolishness that we see on the daily. Amen. My prayer. Amen. Is that we continue to have the testimony that I am evidence. I'm dedicated and faithful, not stagnant. But I also have an ability to improvise as God gives me his spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord and a quick understanding, amen, to be able to judge accordingly, not by what I see, but as God strengthens, as God's anoints, and as God gives me insight and power. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to allow us to be evidence. I certainly hope and pray, oh God, that we have a new view of what it means to be faithful. I pray, oh God, that you would open our hearts and minds, oh God, to receive this word, oh God. And I pray that it would do something to strengthen us for such a time as this. I'm praying, oh God, for you right now that you would unblock the ear, unblock the heart, unblock the mind, oh God, that we would receive this, oh God. That we would embrace the gift of the Holy Ghost and that we would have the testimony that I am evidence. I am evidence. I'm evidence. Amen. That amen. When I don't know the answers, oh God, that you're there with your peace that surpasses all understanding, with your wisdom that comes from on high, that allows me, oh God, to navigate all the things that I'm dealing with even now. Father, we bless you and we praise you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you do not know the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, and the pardon of your sins, don't sleep, amen, on what you got to do. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that, amen, tonight, Amen. That you would open your hearts and avail your spirit. Amen. To amen. Be one with Christ. Amen. Through water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Marvel not. You must be born again. I don't know if you've seen it on your timeline today, but in case you have not, amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And we must be born again. Born of water and born of spirit. I hope the spirit of God spoke to you. I hope it spoke. Amen. To amen. Your place of where you desire to be. But most importantly, I hope that it comes to give you a conviction to rise up and say, I am evidence. Amen. I'm evidence. Amen. Of God's power. Amen. To make us dedicated and faithful and to allow us the ingenuity to navigate through life's crazy times. Amen. I will never allow the situations that I'm facing. Amen. To leave me broken and to leave me saying, I don't know. I'm praying that, amen, that God would flood you with knowledge and that God would flood, flood you, amen, with the wisdom to be able to rise, amen, in the times of adversity, amen, and lean not to your understanding, but to allow, amen, God to give you the breath and to give you the vision and the foresight, amen, and to give you the courage and the power and the empowerment, amen, to go forth, amen, and to, amen, be what he desires you to be for such a time as this, amen. I pray that if you enjoyed tonight's Bible class, you would join me by sowing a seed. You can go out to any one of our electronic platforms, Cash App, Zale, PayPal, amen, that you would put in an envelope and you can mail it to our corporate address, check our money order, 4909 Crenshaw Boulevard, or 4936 uh, Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles, California. Amen. I certainly hope and pray that you all receive something. Amen. Tonight, I certainly hope that you'll continue allowing God to stretch you as he's stretching me. Amen. With the desire to be evidence 
to be evidence, amen, of the glory of God, evidence unto him, amen, faithful and righteous, amen, unto the day of his coming. I certainly hope that if the Lord should come tonight, amen, if he should come at any moment, amen, that your testimony is that my sins are forgiven, uh, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, amen, and that most importantly, I've made my calling and election sure. If you need the Holy Ghost, if you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, pick up that phone and call us at 323-299-2591, amen. Or email us at our corporate email address, btc4909 at net. Amen. We'll come to you, literally. Amen. We baptized a family this past Sunday by going out to their homes and baptizing them at their home. And so we'll come to you. Amen. Should any man forbid water? Amen. I certainly hope, amen, that your spirits are encouraged. I hope, amen. Amen. That you make up your mind to be evidence, amen, of the gift of God and that you will be faithful to the charge we've been given to extend ourselves and stretch ourselves for such a time as this. Amen. My name is Pastor Kyron Shorter. On behalf of myself and my wife and the entire Bethesda Temple Church family, a shout out to Deaconess Monica. Amen. For helping us out in the comment section as always. We love you all. Amen. With the love of Christ Jesus. Again, if you want to be a blessing, amen, meet us on Cash App, PayPal, Zale. Be a blessing to this ministry and your giving. Amen. We look forward to, amen, our next in-person worship service on September the 19th, 11 o'clock. We also look forward to, amen, you coming by our food bank tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. We hope that you'll join us, amen, that's September the 9th, amen, and we're looking forward to God doing great things in our midst. There are so many great things to come. We love you. May heaven smile upon you. May the grace of God go with you in Jesus' name. Peace.